Comrades, over the next months I'll try to discuss some topics related to anarchism theory and so on. I've been planning to make these kind of videos for a long time because there seems to be a great deal of confusion and Marxist prejudice against us, the anarchists. But anyway, today we'll talk about one of the major debates in anarchism around the beginning of the 20th century. The debate started around 1906 when the French revolutionary factions got together in the CGT, the major French Union, after they signed the Charter of Amiens, which became the basis for revolutionary syndicalism. The founding document of revolutionary syndicalism said that the CGT was for all workers of any ideologies. Therefore, the CGT didn't have a specific doctrine. It was an independent workers' organization. They also agreed that the Union could overcome state capitalism. It would become the social organization of the future, which would organize production and redistribute it to everyone according to their needs. The goal of the Union was to prepare the workers for their complete emancipation, which can only be fulfilled by expropriation of the capitalists. Their method of action was direct action, general strike, boycott and sabotage, which would prepare the workers for the social revolution. After the CGT Congress, where the Charter of Amiens was signed, some anarchists started to argue that there was no point in having an anarchist organization besides the Union, since the Union, by itself, was the revolutionary organization of the future communist anarchist society. This question came by in the 1907 Anarchist Congress in Amsterdam when this guy, Pierre Monat, supported that position. Like in the Charter of Amiens, he argued that syndicalism should be anarchist, gaydist, almanist or blankist, but simply a working class organization. His argument was that all workers, no matter their ideas, suffer from wage slavery and have the same class interests. Therefore, they should act together. But he also supported the idea that syndicalism was self-sufficient that there was no need for an anarchist organization. Syndicalism, in this perspective, was like a new school of thought that didn't need any outside intervention to acquire a revolutionary potential. Against this position was Enrico Malatesta, my personal senpai, the Italian anarchist communist, a guy that we'll talk more about in the next videos. For Malatesta, the idea that syndicalism was sufficient by itself in bringing about the social revolution was totally wrong. Malatesta agreed with revolutionary syndicalism, he was in favor of anarchists joining the works movement, just like Bakunin did in First International. And he also agreed with Monat that syndicalism shouldn't be specifically anarchist, Marxist or social democrat, since that would divide the workers. He argued instead that anarchists should join the unions while never renouncing that doctrine, using it as a means of propaganda for the anarchist cause. Anarchists should work inside the unions to agitate workers and to provoke a social revolution. But he also criticized the idea of the revolutionary general strike that revolutionary syndicalism supported. Malatesta said that the strike can't achieve a revolution by itself. At best, it can spark an insurrection, but the revolution will only be victorious after the workers can take the means of production from the bourgeoisie and can fight back in an armed struggle against the powers of the army, politicians and the bosses. He concludes that the position of Monat follows the same mistakes of the earlier anarchists who joined the nihilist movements without understanding the difference between the means and the end. The general strike, the organization of the working class, direct action, boycott and sabotage are all means, but the end, the main goal, is anarchy. This debate marked a new era for anarchism and syndicalism. On the one hand, we had anarchists who joined the unions that supported the principle of syndicalist independence against any kind of indoctrination and that saw syndicalism as self-sufficient. On the other, you had anarchists like Malatesta, who just saw syndicalism as a means to radicalize the masses, but without abandoning the specific anarchist organization, or the anarchist party, as he called it. This debate was also important to understand the new branch of anarchism which formed around this time, anarcho-syndicalism, which rejected both Malatesta and Monate's ideas. For anarcho-syndicalists, syndicalism should proclaim itself anarchism, this idea became widely popular in South America, like with Fora in Argentina, but that will be a topic for another video. That's it. Uh, if you have any suggestion or any topic that you'd like to be discussed, share it in the comments or something. I don't know. 
to end the video, I'll leave you with this clip of Louis Althusser talking about the relationship between Marx and Bakunin. See you. Senti, Lenin diceva che tra gli anarchici e i, e i marxisti vi erano nove decimi di identità e un solo decimo di differenza. Il eh, fatto che, che i comunisti volevano la estinzione dello Stato e gli anarchici il suo abbattimento immediato, sei d'accordo? Sì, sono tutto d'accordo. Perché... Sono, io sono anarchista, ecco sociale. Non sono, no, non sono comunista perché l'anarchismo sociale è al di là del comunismo. Senti, perché si è spezzata questa... Uh, unione culturale fra l'anarchismo e il comunismo che pure esisteva nel, alla oh, fine del XIX secolo. Sì, è una storia molto drammatica, sai, sono i rapporti tra Marx e Bakunin, è, è la storia in cui la personalità di Marx, la personalità negativa di Marx ha giocato un ruolo pre, pre, prepotente, è una storia terribile, terribile. E questo, voglio dire che Marx ha trattato gli anarchisti in un modo impossibile, ingiusto. Ves? Allora, questo ti, ti dà un risentimento di massa, no? che tu non puoi riassorbire così dal da giorno all'altro. Sono delle cose che durano nella testa. Quando tu, tu sei stato trattato male da un altro, eh? tu devi essere il Cristo per, 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 per perdonare. E pu, tu puoi perdonare per te stesso, non puoi perdonare per gli altri, capisci? Quando tu fai violenza alla gente così, quando non hai il rispetto della gente così, come ha fatto Marx, con Bucanini, Bucanini era un po' pazzo, ma cosa c'entra? Dei pazzi ne abbiamo un sacco, anche io sono pazzo.